Wow. What a gorgeous morning. Oh, yeah. Good morning. It is a very good morning. Mmm. Oh, wow. Just, uh, catching up on a little reading. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anywho. Oh. Huh. So, anyways, I'm I'm always fascinated by things, how things work, how reality works, how the universe works, and how biology works. I've always been fascinated by matters of biological science, astronomical and cosmological science, geological science. Yes. And even to a degree, the, uh, the voodoo that is meteorological science. I've always found it quite fascinating, and I read quite extensively about it. I read a lot of books, that's a few, and oh, there are tons more, you know. Mm. Yeah, so. Uh, I keep getting told by reality deniers that the Earth is 6,000 years old, roughly. At least it's always under 10,000 years old. And I, I find that fascinating given that we literally have cities, <laughs> actual cities that are more than 10,000 years old cities that are 12,000 and 14,000 years old. And the reason we know this is because carbon-14 decays at a steady rate. And the reason that it decays at a steady rate is that if the rate changed, it would generate far too much heat. And this would lead to some interesting problems. And that's the same issue with every form of radiometric dating. They all generate a little bit of heat, and if you change the rate, you would change the rate at which they release heat. Yeah. So anyway, people better educated than myself who have dedicated their lives to studying and understanding this stuff have concluded that if you were to fit all the radioactive decay that they find in the world into a period of 6,000 years, we'll, we'll give them 10,000 years, into 10,000 years, the earth would still be a molten ball of slag. Yeah, life would not be possible. That's because of the heat. You see, heat dissipates at a set rate. If you produce too much heat, things melt. That is why we know that the Earth is ancient. It's also part of why we know the universe is ancient. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So right away, the whole Young Earth religious movement is invalidated by that one issue. Heat. Heat is the killer. And yes, the people who have done the calculations do include Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Zoroastrians, as well as atheists. It includes Americans, Russians, Chinese, Cubans, Germans, Polish, Italian, Spanish, Namibian, uh, Vietnamese, Thai. People from all over the world have done these calculations, representing all branches of religious thought, all branches of political thought, all branches of social thought. And they've all come to the same conclusion. So any 
conspiracy between them to fraudulently present the Earth as older than it really is, there's going to be problems. Because there's going to be a whole lot of people saying, no, it isn't. And these are not hillbillies from the backwoods of Alabama. These are not megachurch-owning hillbillies from the backwoods of Florida. These are trained scientists representing the disciplines of scientific rigor and integrity. These are people who want to be known as the one who got it right. They're the ones who are trying to narrow it down to the closest margin of error. So no, these are not people who are involved in a conspiracy to feed you a wrong answer. Because, quite honestly, they don't get anything from that, except ultimately exposed, humiliated, and referenced forever in the history books as the fraud, which in the world of science is a very bad thing to be called. I know in religion, especially in the big three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, being dismissed and disparaged as the fraud means that you get to claim martyrdom status, which gets you points. But in science, that doesn't exist. It literally does not exist, because science isn't a belief system that depends on authorities. It's a matter of searching for the correct answer. And until we have a better answer, we go with this answer. And it's never calculating the Earth's age back to a million years, then a hundred million years, then a billion years, and then four and a half billion years, and then all of a sudden, less than 10,000. It's never going to be that way. Instead, it's refined out to a million years, then a hundred million, then a billion, then about four or five billion, then four and a half billion. And then 4.63 billion. And then working down to fractions and percentages that are tinier and tinier, getting it closer and closer. But we know it's closer to 4.5 billion than it is to 10,000. We know this. Because Real scientists have done the calculations, taking into account every single variable, including what if the rates of radioactive decay were different in the past? Yes, they've taken that into account. And the result is heat, 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 infinite amounts of heat. Visualize, if you will, a thousand atomic bombs being detonated on every square mile of Earth's surface. That's the kind of heat that we are dealing with if you want to speed up the radioactive decay to fit it within a 10,000 year frame. That's the kind of heat we're dealing with. And you can't make that disappear. You can't make that go away. You just can't. That's the same thing with why the heat problem destroys Noah's flood as scientific fact and exposes it as mythology, which it is. It's mythology. Heat. Heat kills young earth presuppositions. It destroys them. It exposes young earth ideology as complete and utter nonsense. <clears throat> so yeah, when young earth creationists say the rate of decay was different then, 
they're speaking from a place of complete ignorance. Because, yes, real scientists from multiple countries representing multiple religious and political backgrounds have done those calculations. And they have found that, no, the heat problem kills young earth ideology, kills it dead, exposes it for the nonsense that it is. Heat. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, wow. I have a busy day ahead. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. Love yous all.